Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm James Milan, and this is Talk of the Town. Today, we are talking to Katrina Rosenberg, who is a, uh, an Arlington native. Um, she uh, put out a query on the Arlington list recently for building materials for a particular project, and it really caught our attention. So uh, we reached out and are happy uh, to be able to talk to Katrina today a little bit more about that. So Katrina, first of all, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Of course, thank you so much for reaching out. Absolutely. So I kind of referred very obliquely to the project that we're talking about here, um, but why don't you go ahead and just explain um, what it was um, that brought you to our attention? Yeah, of course. So I had sent out an email to the all-knowing list um, asking if anybody had any supplies such as hardware cloth um, or I think I may have even asked if they had lumber or anything like that um, because I am building pre-release cages for squirrels <laughs> so that they can get used to being in the elements but being protected for a few weeks before they get put back into nature where they belong. Mm -hmm. I suspect that some in the audience, like myself, um, might be curious about how much of this kind of thing is happening. Um, so in other words, my experience with squirrels, like I expect our, our, a lot of people's, is that, well, they're all over the place and they're doing their <laughs> yeah. thing. Um, but clearly there are some that are in need of, of, of rescue or support or aid in this way. Can you explain what that is about? Uh, yeah, so squirrels are everywhere. <laughs> and because of that, there are um, wildlife rehabilitators get a ton of calls and it tends to be centered more um, in the spring and then in late summer when squirrels are having babies. So what often happens is if there's any kind of storm, if there's like a super windy day, um, babies will get knocked from their nests or entire nests will get knocked from trees. Um, and people like walking their dogs or in parks or just, you know, walking down the street, they'll often find baby squirrels just on the ground or, you know, in the gutter or on their lawns. Um, and so there are these big periods of time where wildlife rehabilitators are just completely overwhelmed by calls for baby squirrels. And I mean, other animals in, in addition, but um, because squirrels tend to have two to three litters a year, um, there'll be these huge rushes. And, um, and yeah, and baby squirrels are pretty helpless. Like they're mm -hmm. usually born blind and deaf and furless. Um, and so, and they require like around the clock care. So it's a pretty intensive process. And so rehabbers can only take a certain number before they're like, I can't take any more. So it kind of becomes this, um, yeah, just this big, like uh, all hands on deck kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now is about the time when these squirrels from you know the summer are being released. So we kind of- So yeah. you, you mentioned it's kind of an all hands on deck kind of thing and you're one of those hands as it turns out, right? I am, um, yeah. Because this is not your profession. Mm -hmm. um, in <laughs> fact, I, I believe you're, you're a registered nurse. Yes, that's correct. Um, so this is something that you are doing um, as, a, as a volunteer. And um, so a couple of things. One is, um, are there folks who do this for a living or really is all of this kind of animal rehabilitation most, you know, mostly in the hands of volunteers? Um, so the thing about wildlife rehabilitators is there are organizations that do it. Um, there's Newark which, you know, you, so basically there can be wildlife organizations or there can be independently licensed wildlife rehabilitators who operate independently. Um, and they don't get funding from the state. Yeah, so it's, I, was say, I was wondering where they get yep, that funding from. Yep, so it's all donation-based, um, which can be kind of tricky if you are independently licensed and you don't work under the umbrella of an organization um, because it is, it is basically a full-time job if you're doing it, you know, all the time. And so, yeah, you have to have some kind of, some kind of funding from it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it can be a little so, a little tricky. <laughs> how did you get involved with this? How did you decide that this would be something that you would be spending, I would expect a considerable amount of your free time, uh, <laughs> energy and perhaps even money on? Um, so I, as you know, as we said before, so I'm a registered nurse, but um, when COVID hit, I live with my grandfather and I help take care of him. And I also have a lot of contact with my mom who takes care of my grandfather and I have asthma. So it kind of was this, I was working in community health and they tend to be hotbeds of COVID. So I figured, you know, it's time to just step back and take a little, take a little break <laughs> from nursing for just for, you know, an amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, and this past June, I was in Arlington with my family and our neighbors came across the street and they were holding this tiny baby rabbit and they go, look at this rabbit. And we think our cat brought it inside the house. And I went, oh no, oh no, because I have two rabbits myself. And I knew that especially wild rabbits, their hearts can literally burst from fear from if they're being held or if they're being around a lot of noise, like they can just die of fright. Um, and so I went, okay, we need to get him in a quiet place. We need to get him contained and away from people and away from sound. And so I happened to have a crate in Arlington, like a little animal carrier. Um, so we put him in that with some towels and I went, well, now what? <laughs> what do we do with this rabbit? Um, so I did research and I had no idea. Personally, I had no idea that you can just call a wildlife rehabilitator and they will come and take and rehabilitate the animal and take it to the vet if they need to. And I'd seen all these nature shows. I loved reading nature books as a kid, like especially about wildlife rescue, but I didn't know that it was something you could just call. You could just, you know, that they're local people. I thought it was, you know, major organizations or things mm -hmm, like that. Right. So. So it was this whole new world that kind of <laughs> I delved into but because of this baby rabbit. Um, and I called a local reha rehabilitator in Arlington actually. Um, and she wasn't able to get there for a couple of hours, but she said, if you're comfortable, if you could put on a pair of gloves and just check the rabbit for any injuries because especially cat captured animals, you need to make sure that there aren't any skin sure. breaks. Because right. cats are not generally going to be gentle in the way that no. they <laughs> um, And also, but something about cats and their saliva is they have pastorella in their spit, which is a bacteria that is particularly fatal to small animals. Mm. Um, and so even if the animal looks okay, and you're like, oh, you just release it into your backyard. If your cat brings in a rabbit or if it brings in a chipmunk or it brings in a squirrel, um, if there was any kind of puncture, and any saliva contact or any scratch or anything like that, um, the animal will usually die within like a day or two. So um, it's essentially like this toxic, toxic spit. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. So again, something I never would have known if this hadn't happened. So, um, so she asked me to check this this rabbit over, and I was like, I do I do a lot of wound care at, as a nurse. So I was like, eh, well, I'm fine. I can deal with this. Uh, and I'm checking him over and he looked okay. And then there's like a little wet spot on his side and I kind of moved the fur aside. He had this big, Good size puncture, big, huh? big chunk of skin missing. So I was like, oh no, this poor, poor baby. So she, she came and got him a little bit later. Um, he made it, he survived just to <laughs> spoiler. Yeah, yes, our audience will want to know, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he did really well. I think we got the antibiotics into him soon enough because they have to get pretty intensive antibiotics um, with cat bites. Um, but yeah, and, and but because of that, I had called another rehabber who hadn't answered initially before I got in contact with the local one. Um, and the first person I called, she got back in contact with me. Um, and she was, we just ended up talking for like an hour about wildlife rehabilitation. And she was like, oh yeah, you know, things are crazy right now. We are getting so many calls, like hundreds of calls a day about downed animals and squirrels in particular and rabbits, a lot of baby rabbits. Um, and I was like, hey, if there's any way that I can help, I'm not working currently as a nurse. So I have, you know, a fair amount of free time. And, and she was like, 
I will, I will, you know, <laughs> I will follow up with you on that. Um, and right, how- music to her ears, I am sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so we did a bunch of training and she, uh, I'm basically her intern. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Well, I'll tell you, it's a, you know, we look for, as you might imagine, bright spots um, in, in, you know, over these last number of months. And this is clearly, you know, one of those opportunities and one of the silver linings um, that, ha- you know, particularly for the squirrels that you are, uh, <laughs> that you are helping and that yeah. little baby rabbit, et cetera. But, but just yeah. in general, clearly it has brought you <clears throat> plenty of joy. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. Um, what is, you know, so what is your, like, currently, what are you doing? And in terms of, are you in charge of, in charge of, I don't even know if that's the right kind of phrasing. <laughs> yeah. um, but are you um, basically taking care of the pre-release of one, two, three, seven, 12 squir- squirrels? I don't, I don't know. Um, so currently I am in charge of six squirrels who I have been there for since they were what we call pinkies, um, mm. where you know they're anywhere from a couple of days to maybe a week old um, when we found them. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> they kind of just kind of kept trickling in. So it was like, oh yeah, it's only two. That, that's, that's totally fine. Then it was like, okay, well, all right. Next day you got calls for two more, one in the morning and one at night. And you're like, all right, I have four now. <laughs> um yeah it was it was pretty insane for a while um when you can distinct like you know here's a kind of silly question but um Mm. do 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 these squirrels have different personalities for you having spent time with them oh yeah oh yeah yeah they're and like any any young creatures you know a a litter of puppies or kittens or something like that you can quickly distinguish personalities and Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and also just, you know, subtle variations in marking where you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's Linus. Oh yep. That one's Lucy. That one's people are like, how can you tell? It's just a wriggling mass of pink. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So have you actually named your six squirrels or? Yep. So they all have names. Um, some of them were named by the people who found them actually. Cause I like to, we like to give, give people that opportunity if they want. I don't know. I just think it's kind of nice because we'll, you know, we'll keep them updated um, every once in a while to be like, hey, how are my babies doing? <laughs> <laughs> send a picture, send them an update. Um, I, I don't know. I know that I appreciated that when um, the rabbit that, you know, we get, we brought to the, to the rehabilitator, I appreciated updates. So. Um, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, how can you not? You, you, you can, it helps you to continue to feel good and great about what it, you know you know your own small part in it while somebody exactly. else is doing almost all the work <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard um, to beat that so yeah and like obviously it's not like a daily update because you're often so busy that like sometimes mm-hmm. you get back to people for a little bit but <laughs> yeah so are all six squirrels imminently like are they all at the stage now of pre-release and and so oh yeah what what is the timing on that is this going to be they'll be assuming you can get the cages and we should certainly talk about what you still need (laughs) in order to be able to do that um but assuming that that all moves along um what what kind of timing are we talking about that they would spend in that that environment and then and then is that the last thing that happens before they're actually released yeah so so um it's usually it's not you tend to go by milestones rather than age or size um because sometimes like one of our squirrels uh she was she was kind of a runt you know she was just she's and she's still the smallest of all of them but so if you're going purely by weight or size maybe a little iffy but she's they're all rearing to go. They're just like ready to get out. Um, so basically there are some basic milestones that they have to be able to meet before you can release them into the wild. And that includes being able to crack nuts, like in shell nuts. Um, because if they can't do that, if their jaws aren't strong enough, their teeth aren't strong enough, they don't know how to do it, then they're not gonna survive you know, out 
with the trees mm-hmm. and the walnuts and beech nuts and acorns. Um, so they have to be able to crack nuts. They have to be able to cache their food. So if you've ever seen squirrels running around and like digging in the ground and digging in the ground and burying things. Um, so that's something that that behavior kind of comes with time and also just like seeing their, you know, their siblings doing it. So, um, so they all love cracking nets and they all are really good at caching. So, so that, uh, I assume that that means that somehow are, are they outside in some controlled environment um, in order for you to be able to tell these things that they can, you know, I imagine they could crack the nuts whether they're in a cage or not, but, but, you know, caching, for instance, yeah. I mean, they, they really, they literally have to be able to show you they can do that, right? So how does that mm. work? Um, so they're currently in big cages at that um, are in a shed right now so that they get that temperature variation and like the doors are open during the day so they get the air and the wind and the, um, but then at night they're closed in so they're protected because there are a lot of raccoons around. Um, I don't know, <laughs> there's that rabbit raccoon just like last week. So, um, you know, so just to kind of keep them protected while they're still getting, they're still adapting kind of more to the weather and being semi outdoors. Um, so we, we provide them, we actually, uh, we'll walk around the neighborhood and pick up acorns and pick up beech nuts and you're just you know you just kind of right. scavenge you know scavenge fallen <laughs> little, little um, uber eats for the squirrels they're exactly. <laughs> delivered right to their door <laughs> i know they have such an easy life <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and so and they will just right now because they're not on the ground they're in a shed you know in their in these cages um they will kind of bury it in their bedding or they'll like go to the corner and sort of like bury it in their other food or (laughs) it's kind of cute or like (laughs) trying to cover it so basically as long as they have that instinct to to bury these things and and then that's what you're looking to assess and make sure they can do i mean Um, you also like want to give them like a little dish of dirt so that they get used to digging in dirt as well to bury stuff and dig stuff up so Wow. It, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's absolutely fascinating, actually, to think about something that I never would have thought about before, which is how do you mm. stimulate if you're a caring human like you? Um, how do you simulate the things that, that, a, that a squirrel or any other small creature would learn, just as you say, from siblings, from, from um, you know, yeah. parents, etc.? Um, you know, just growing up in the environment and you Mm. have to do that in novel ways, you know, within a kind of constricted for safety reasons environment. And Mm. that's amazing. And I wonder though, whether, I don't know, how do you feel about the fact that in some time you will Mm. be releasing your six little ones um, <laughs> in, into the world, hopefully having prepared them as best uh, you yeah. could, like all of us parents understand. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, what happens at that point? Do you just, I mean, I assume they go off and that's that. Um, there's no way of tracking. There's no way of keeping them, you know, where you can see them or anything like that. Is that, is that right? Um, so, yeah. So, the release process, um, they often will stay generally within, I think the, I think the general's like area that they stay in is a couple football fields worth of distance. Mm. So wherever they're released. Um, and it's usually recommended to release them within a few miles, I think within like two miles of where they were caught or where the, wherever they were found or whatever the, you know, the situation is. Obviously that's not always possible, but um, uh, so the release process involves, you you, you have them outside in a pre-release cage, um, which is essentially just like a six or eight foot by six or eight feet by a couple feet size wire mesh enclosed, completely exposed to the elements <laughs> enclosure um, for maybe like a couple weeks, two weeks maybe. Um, and then you have a nest box in there. And then when they're ready for release, you put the nest box up in a tree, maybe 
15 to 30 feet up in a tree um and then yeah they fasten it very well <laughs> to this tree and then that's kind of their starter home um that's where they'll you know oftentimes kind of stay together for a bit and maybe they'll stay in it through the winter maybe they'll go off and build their own dray which is what you call a squirrel nest those big leafy bundles you see in trees are called drays um and yeah and, the, and sometimes they'll come back and kind of visit and be like oh hey I know you <laughs> um, but they do wild up they wild up pretty effectively um and yeah there's no way to track them and no way to make guarantee their safety but <laughs> right, you right. but I mean just knowing skills. that that as you say they do adapt relatively yeah. quickly and certainly yep. kind of consistently that is the case it's got to be you know that has to be reassuring I would think yeah. um yeah so a couple of things left. One is um, what guidance have you picked up already that would be good to share with others around what to do if you come across a vulnerable small animal for, you know, of probably various different sorts, but are there kind of general guidelines? Clearly you're gonna to wanna to reach out to a wildlife rehabilitator Definitely. in the same way yeah. as you did, um, but, any other kind of pointers for folks uh, should they find themselves in that situation? Definitely. Um, so if it's something like a rabbit or a squirrel, or, you know, basically a non, like a non rabies carrier, right? So we're talking rodents kind of animals. Um, they generally don't carry diseases that can hurt people. They might have fleas, but not nothing like they're not going to give you rabies. They're not going to, you know, um, so in, if you find them on the ground, particularly if it's a baby, you know, eyes closed or anything, um, you want to immediately get them into like a cardboard box with maybe some fleece or flannel and on a heating pad, because usually if they're on the ground, they're usually kind of hypothermic, um, kind of cold. They usually feel cold to the touch. Um, but you don't want to put it on high heat and you want to kind of keep the box half on the heating pad so that they can escape, you know, move away from the heat if they want to. Um, and that's like, you know, the first, the first thing that you do. And then you know, if they're wet, you dry them off. Um, and then you call a rehabber. And sometimes if, you know, the baby squirrel or rabbit or whoever it is, if they're clearly not injured, sometimes they'll have very obvious injuries. Um, but if there's no apparent injuries and, you know, they're kind of wiggling and lively and, um, sometimes the squirrels, they'll have you kind of monitor the box. You put it near where you found them. And sometimes the mo mother squirrel will come and actually come and pick them up and bring them back to the nest. Um, but if that doesn't happen then, or if they do have injuries or anything like that, if they are just really cold, um, they'll generally need some kind of intervention. Um, in which case that's where the wildlife rehabilitator comes in. Um, but yeah, generally you want to get them safe and warm and dry don't try to feed them. That's another big thing mm. um, is because the likelihood of them aspirating, well, they'll choke on the fluid if it's too fast or if it's too, if it's the wrong kind of fluid, like a lot of people will get calls and they'll be like, oh yeah, I've been feeding it cow milk for a couple of days. And you're like, no, because <laughs> they can get really bad bloat. They can die from that. Um, it's usually a fairly specific kind of formula that they need. So, um, the general rule of thumb is don't try and give it fluids. Um, don't try and feed it. Um, wait until you've contacted a rehabilitator. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of the, <laughs> yeah. Think, that. You know, I, I, those are easy things to remember several of them. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's great to share. Um, let me ask you the, there, this is a lot of effort uh, to put in to ensure the well-being of a half dozen squirrels, um, who again, I think people don't pay a lot of attention to on the whole or, yeah. or highly value in, in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, what inspires you um, to do that? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of a softie when it comes to everybody and everything. Um, 
I definitely love animals and uh, especially if an animal is in need, like these, all of these baby squirrels were orphaned or, um, you know, found on the ground or had injuries. And, and so I was like, well, of course, of course I'm going to help if I can. Um, also squirrels are, they're not endangered in any, in any sense. <laughs> as, as we know, we have an abundance of squirrels, um, but they are, you know, somewhat important to, you know, in terms of reforestation. I know we're kind of in the suburbs, so it's not as important, but um, mm -hmm. they're pretty important uh, critters for planting trees because they forget where a lot of the nuts that they buried are and those, you know, <laughs> helpful, right? new plants and new trees. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, they're so smart. They're so intelligent and very affectionate and in captivity, which obviously you wouldn't want normally unless there's something, something seriously wrong where they can't be released back into the wild, but um, they can live up to 20 years. Um, generally in the wild, if they survive the first year, which is about a 50% survival rate. Um, so it's kind of, you know, uh, and, but <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense to, to me. Yeah. You know. yeah. I mean, all this, I'm sure you've probably been seeing a lot of squirrels in the road, like within the last several weeks, because those are the young, you know, leaving the nest and getting used to the outside world. And they don't know what to do with cars and right. awesome stuff. And yeah. Um, but yeah, so if they survive the first year, then they can generally live, I'd say about six to eight years in the wild. If they're in a really, you know, kind of more safe space and if they're really fast and really smart, you know, up to 12 usually. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, they're very, yeah, I, more yeah. stuff that I never knew. So yeah. thank you. Pre yeah. Really appreciate it. Um, last question is um, mm -hmm. obviously you took, you, 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 you took a kind of COVID mandated or dictated break um, mm -hmm. from, from nursing. Um, I imagine you'll, you either have or will be returning to that sometime soon. Do you, um, do you plan to try and make space for this work uh, as well as you, you know, as you move back into, to, you know, working full time? Or is this a, a kind of, did we catch you at the right moment to talk about this? <laughs> because uh, it may not be something that you can continue to incorporate in your life. So squirrels are so I'm not, I'm not sure if I would be able to uh, take care of squirrels you know as if I'm working <laughs> as a nurse uh, because especially in the very beginning it is 24 7 you have to feed them every two to three hours around the clock if I'm waking up you know one in the morning three in the morning five in the morning it was brutal absolutely brutal I was like is this what it's like to have a newborn Child. Oh my goodness! It's, it's, <laughs> it was intense. Not that bad. <laughs> it was intense, <laughs> and you know, and you have to cook for them. So I was just a total basket case. Um, so I had got a lot of support from my mom and sisters. So that was great, um, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's it's probably very feasible for me to do, um, at least for now. I think it is something that I would want to want to get into probably later on. I don't know with what, whatever it is, but I, I do love it a lot. And I do feel like it's uh, important work to be done. And, you know, especially with opossums, you know, things that are really important for, you know, tick population control and, you know, their nature's garbage disposal. So like, I would love to work with possums, you know, in the future, but for now, I think I'm probably, probably gonna put a pause on this. <laughs> Yeah. And also I'd want to get my wildlife rehabilitator licensing, which is a little bit of an involved process. You have to, you know, do a bunch of studying, you have to learn a lot, and then you have to actually sit and take an exam. So I think it's online, but yeah, you have to. How would you as an RN know anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm like yeah. oh man i got nothing my time <laughs> going through a process like that one is enough for a lifetime <laughs> um uh yeah. I do want to, I, I realize I want to make sure that we ask you what it is that you are looking for currently. Mm -hmm. So if people are tuning in and interested yeah. in helping out, uh, what is it that you could use? 
Oh man. Yeah. So um, right now we actually, this week are going to be building nest boxes and we need to build the pre-release cages because it's about that time. <laughs> we have to get them out into the outside. Um, <clears throat> so we still need lumber. So I'd like two by fours or two by sixes because um, we have to build two cages. We have to build two of these giant cages. So it's it's a little intimidating and overwhelming <laughs> trying to get that. So um, I've already had a, a really sweet friend. Um, she bought us a roll of hardware cloth from Home Depot of, you know, it's like the half inch or quarter inch with spacing. Um, but yeah, like things that you'd think like, oh, why you can just use chicken wire, but chicken wire is, you can chew right through it. Well, mm -hmm. Not you, but like a, or a raccoon. <laughs> but <laughs> you know? Linus or Lucy, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically just hardware cloth and, and lumber are two of our biggest, biggest things <laughs> that we could definitely use help with, yeah. Great. Okay, so if you're out there listening and watching, <laughs> um, we'll provide the information for how you can reach out to Katrina uh, with any offers for help, and I'm sure yeah. they will be appreciated. Definitely. And so. well used. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, um, thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah, you know, of Katrina, course. it really has been an education and, and a, a lovely way to spend some time in the middle of a pandemic um, mm -hmm. talking about and finding out about uh, your efforts on behalf of these tiny and lovely <laughs> little creatures. Um, yeah. So best of luck with that. And um, I hope you, you know, see them off um, and, you know, with a full heart and, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure that they will will do very well and come back to visit at some point as you here's said. hoping right <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you again i've been yeah, talking to you. katrina rosenberg um, this is talk of the town and i'm james milan thanks for joining us